um, my friend, my brother in STEM. I, you know, I missed you. I haven't talked to you in a minute. And, um, and I didn't even get to tell you that I was in uh, California. Um, was this last year? Uh, January? Was that? No, I was in California. I forget. I think I was there January. No, not just January last. But I, I don't know why I didn't catch up with you. I was doing a lot of engineering stuff. Um, engineering With stuff. that aside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. With that aside, it's, it's just always great. Um, and it always, it's always a great opportunity, you know, to talk to you. I consider you just more than a brother in terms of what we're doing, but I just love your commitment to STEM. Thank and you so much. I just, yeah, and um, I was talking to, you know, uh, Paul Day and um, Gerald Moore okay. uh, last week, who I introduced you to, right? And I just said, wow, these brothers have to meet. I, sometimes I'm so excited as a female in male-dominated industries that I've always been in, I get to meet some of the most fascinating men, you know? And, um, and I consider you one of those. And so um, I, I wish I would have had you on that call. However, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because um, I knew that I still wanted to talk to you about okay. <laughs> what you're doing in terms of, you know, Diesel Network, tell us what that is. Um, tell us what you're doing in terms of what's happening with COVID. And um, I just really want to talk about why STEM, not just STEM education, but STEM industries are so very important, especially for our community. Speak to that. Okay, so uh, thank you so much, uh, Sabrina, for this uh, wonderful introduction. <laughs> so as uh, you know, uh, we are STEMers. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I always like speaking with you. And it is always a great pleasure uh, to talk about the many things that are happening within uh, the STEM fields. So, which is on uh, the acronym for Science and Technology Engineering Mathematics. So, over the years, I have been involved uh, with GEZO, uh, G E A Z E, uh, which is a platform that focuses on STEM. So, the idea is to bring STEMers together, to share, to collaborate, and talk about what STEM is all about and how we can introduce young kids, young folks, and not only young kids and young people, but those who are actually in the STEM fields, how they can collaborate. And now we are all are sitting at home, we may have ideas, so we don't even know how to collaborate with others. So we try to go on Facebook or LinkedIn, but Zoom. trying not to meet people with Zoom as we are here, and uh, trying not to meet people uh, who may want to share our ideas, but we may want to talk about science, technology, and your mathematics. Okay. And now, since uh, you mentioned our COVID-19, so the STEM fields are more important, more than ever. So, Without science, engineering, technology, and mathematics, we may never find a vaccine that will combat the disease, uh, this virus, uh, COVID-19. Yeah, not just the um, vaccination, but everything else around it in terms of the technology, the supply chains, the logistics, you know, the testing, the... Um, figuring out that there is faulty, that there was faulty testing equipment. You know, all these are, you know, STEM, you know, STEM fills um, and, uh, you know, STEMers. And as I call myself also a STEMinist, you know, we're all involved, right? And, um, but I, I still find that so many, and you tell me if this is your experience, so many people, so many, especially in our communities, don't see a place for them don't know that they're involved in STEM, you know, already. And, um, you know, like um, last week also, I was asked, well, how did I get into, you know, automotive technologies, one of my, you know, my first uh, careers and first degree. And I said, I always, I was already in it, right? I, I was always in a car, you know, as a passenger. I just, I, you know, so 
I mean, what is that about? I, what, what's the, why are we so hesitant? You know, is it because all the disciplines, you know, these are the hard disciplines all come together? <laughs> but there's so, some barriers for us. Yeah, so the, the point is uh, to make uh, connections uh, for people. Uh, like, uh, oftentimes, so not now, because I cannot go to the gym anymore. So I used to go to my gym and I see some kids, some guys shooting hoops. Right. But they never make the basket because they are shooting at the basket at a wrong angle. They are not using the geometry. arcing, geometry, and things like that. Right. And there is this notion, if you are in sport, you are not using STEM. You have to use STEM. So okay. for instance, if you are on a football, football field, it is windy. You have to adjust with the wind, yes. how fast the wind is moving, the direction of the wind, and now how fast you have to throw that ball. So all these things are interconnected with STEM disciplines. And again, one other aspect I always want to tell people, if you are also in fashion, yes. that means you are a stemmer. Absolutely. So where does STEM come into fashion? So if my size is large and you are not using precise measurement, being off by two centimeters, that means my outfit may not be a large, it may be a medium or an extra large. Right? <laughs> uh, to some extent. So all the applications of uh, STEM and fashion could be the materials themselves. For instance, material science. So how can uh, we come up with a new material uh, that could be light enough that has uh, nano entities mm -hmm. in it embedded as to where I can wear the same light jacket whenever I go outside, it recognizes it is hot, it keeps me cool, or right. it is cold, it keeps me warm. So yeah, the same thing, Milton, even for um, if you were interested in fashion, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't see as many people. I know there are so many girls that love sports and love fashion. You have Serena Williams, Venus Williams, but there are so many everyday females that are like that too. And you, I mean, if, if, if they can just apply that even to the uniforms, when you talk about the materials, uh, you know, for clothing, for your suit, the same is true for the materials for sports. But again, I'm just so concerned that um, the connections are not only being uh, made consistently and constantly enough in the schools, but I'm also finding that uh, so many young people, young you know, students and, and young adults do not have the wherewithal to make the, uh, the connections themselves, you know, to apply what they have learned or apply their experiences, you know, uh, so that they can actually see uh, the lucrativeness, you know, if that is a word, I don't know, I just made that up. We, we, we just have, this is on what neo, neo, neology is all about, and we just make them up every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Language is a living thing. You living know, thing, yes. uh, but I just, you know, I, I just, it's, it's a struggle because, you know, when I hear you talking about the, um, you know, the, 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 the elements and, you know, the wind and, um, and making the adjustments, you know, for throwing a football, the same as uh, someone who is shooting a gun, you know, have to think about someone who is flying planes, you know, or drones, you know, have to think about, you know, and so I'm just discouraged because I feel like we um, are, you know, in schools, uh, students are getting knowledge and just and not getting it at the same time. They're not getting how to apply it on their own. So I'm, it's, it's just so much authenticity that is just missed out. So, you know, that's why I love um, talking with you. I just, what is it that um, your network, your platform, I keep calling it a network, but it's a platform. What, what is it that you offer? So uh, my platform offers many things. So uh, first, the best way that I can describe it, it is a platform 
that is there to engage people who are basically in science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So not only those who are basically in STEM, but how can we bring other people who could be interested about STEM, not knowing exactly what STEM is all about, and how they can learn more. And uh, this is one of the reasons that we as STEMers, uh, we have an obligation to inform the people. But oftentimes, uh, we are using platforms that are not well appropriate. For instance, if we are using a platform like LinkedIn, mm -hmm. the basic idea of our LinkedIn is uh, to connect with other professionals who are looking for work, looking for jobs and things like that. But wow. even we try to uh, use LinkedIn to promote STEM, but the platform itself was not designed for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is exactly where the Gizo platform comes in, so which is a collaborative platform where people who are in STEM can post articles that are pertaining to STEM. For instance, on COVID-19 right now, which is basically a major topic that is going worldwide. So you have an idea, how can you post an idea about COVID? What yeah. is uh, your thinking about such uh, progress to some extent? Mm -hmm. And also, if you have uh, some publication, you can actually publish that as well on Gizo. And if you want to talk to someone right away, we have uh, this instant messaging where we can communicate and things like that. You can create your own uh, sub-network. So, for instance, if you are a teacher in STEM and uh, you are in material science, you can uh, create a material science sub network for people and you can invite them out to be on the, pl the platform so all is about science technology engineering and mathematics and uh, this is exactly yeah, where we are mm -hmm. we would like our people to visit gizo see the many things that we offer and uh, the, share the importance screen. share the screen milton share, share the screen you can share your screen and show us and uh, you know, walk them through, and we definitely will invite them to, um, you know, to visit and join. So basically, give me a second here. Okay. So basically, I knew you were talking about uh, sharing the screen. Let me see. Do I move? Do you I? Have close, you have to close a few uh, screens. Yeah, I had that. I had to close a few screen stuff. Yeah. Tell me, how did you get the, the name Gizo? Am I still there? I don't see you anymore. Can you still see me? I still see you. So let's see here. You see at the bottom, right in the middle, where it says share screen? Uh, just a second. There you go. Okay, share. Uh, just give me, okay. Give me a second here. Because I'm still uh, new to that uh, Zoom stuff. I never actually use it. So this is exactly uh, the ignorance of our uh, technology. So I have uh, a proprietary software that I normally use, uh, which I know how to use very well, <laughs> but not so much is. So share screen, which is basically share. Okay, this thing here. All I'll right. let you know when I see your screen. All right, so I see. I see where we are. Okay, good. So how did you get the name Gizel? So how did I get the name Gizel? Do you see my screen right now? It's about to come up. It's it's a little delay. Okay. There it is. Do you see it? Okay. Uh, yeah, you got a lot of yeah a lot of things open. Why don't Why don't you drag that one out? Drag the Gizel out so that you know you didn't have to close those. So we have to see okay. everything. So, I have a lot of things open there. I know. That's what I was trying to tell you. You know how to to isolate the tab. Yeah, so let me go back and get you here. Don't worry. No, don't go back. It's okay. okay. Oh, I like it. I like, I I, I haven't been on in a while. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you it's have uh, to go. Updating. You, I love it. So you have uh, to go on Gizo because uh, Gizo is uh, by far a very dynamic uh, platform. But, so, but Milton, when you say platform, it's, it's more like, 
it's, it's, it's also like a browser as well, right? It's a browser. Uh, uh, not, so mu not so much a browser, uh, not like a Google uh, okay. Chrome or something like that, uh -huh. but it is uh, more uh, like a lectern, okay. uh, but gearing toward STEM. So, but and also we have a uh, much more um, better tools than lectern. So right. because I still lectern as a big, a repository for emails. You send someone an email and right. and things like that. So uh, versus uh, Gizo, you can upload article, uh, documents, yeah. uh, so videos. So you can see it. The published articles, the featured documents. So you can do all of those things. But uh, to get access uh, to certain areas of uh, the platform, you actually have uh, to create an account. So okay. then uh, you log in. So then uh, everything opens up for you. So like uh, for all our platforms that uh, you could go out there these days, you have uh, to create an account. Once uh, that account is created, then you can go on and, and so on and so on. So how might teachers use it? Uh, your teachers uh, can use it. They can go and create an account. Once uh, they finish uh, creating an account, they can uh, create a sub network that is uh, basically inside the platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, that sub network can be open or closed, so they can only invite their own students to use it, and mm -hmm. only the students can access it. So without uh, the outside members using uh, such a uh, sub network, okay. so and uh, they can post articles as well, uh, videos. Uh, they can share videos, upload videos. Uh, it could be YouTube or upload them directly from the computer uh, to the system. And uh, they can uh, share uh, comments together on uh, their post and so on. Mm -hmm. So, and as far as uh, the questions that you asked me earlier, how I did come up with the name Gizo. So, uh, when the idea came to me uh, some years ago, and I was looking for a name, a name that could be in such a way in a verb a noun, and also I can transform such as well as into an adverb. Oh, so, okay. and I was uh, thinking, how do I get to that name? And I said, so many, then one night, and I went out to bed, and I woke up in the middle of the night with the name Gizo, G-A-Z-L-E. So I, I went, I was upstairs, I went down to my computer, and I went directly, and search that name was available, Gizo. And I said, to Gizo is uh, basically someone who is going to grow intellectually. Uh -huh. The E is basically enhance your knowledge, and A is basically apply your knowledge, and the L is learn something new, okay. and the E is elevate your attitude and aptitude. So that is Gizo. So, I so that. to That's Gizo. Well. Yeah. Exactly. To Gizo, and uh, the person who is uh, using uh, the platform Gizo is a Gizler, and such a way, as we are working on Gizo, we can say, "Happy Gizling." Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, you wow! You really thought about this. I didn't. I didn't know that before. Yes, yes. So I, I want I love it. it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what do you plan on to do this evening? Oh, I plan on to do some gizzling tonight. <laughs> you have to, <laughs> Milton, you got to put, you got to put that out there. You got to, you know, you got to train us so that we use it in the ways that you've envisioned it. You exactly. know, you can't leave it up to us, you know, to think of it on our own. So maybe, you know, some little animation or something, but some of those things, you know, uh, you know, saying those things or those scenarios that you just stated. So well, as, a, as a matter of fact, on the About Us page, I believe I have uh, something similar to this. So if I were to open uh, the About Us, yeah. so what the letters and Gizzo stand for okay. is basically grow intellectually, enhance your thinking, apply your knowledge, zen your world, learn something new, elevate your aptitude and altitude. Yeah. So that is uh, basically Gizzo in a nutshell. So Gizzo... Hold on, Milton. I think you should also include attitude. That's important. 
So elevate your aptitude, attitude, and altitude. One yeah, aptitude. well, when you do those, <laughs> if you, when you, you know, elevate your attitude, that's going to help you with your aptitude and your altitude. E exactly. So I'm just going to, have to add that on behalf of you. So I will give you credit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Milton, th it, your website it, it looks phenomenal. You know, I, I remember it from the beginning and I just see how, you know, your commitment and it's just the interface is just so clean and sleek. I, I love it. Tell us, Milton, tell us a little bit about you and, um, you know, the, the work that you do before and also with, you know, Giesel, you know, just like, who are you? <laughs> so who I am? So I am Milton. <laughs> so uh, basically uh, I am Milton as you know I am I have been uh, a proponent of STEM for a long time so it was not by accident that I became a STEM proponent so I remember too well when I was growing up uh, back in the days in the Caribbean uh, some years ago where in the Caribbean I was born on the island of Lagunav so uh -huh. which is uh, basically located on the west coast and the gulf of laguna of Port Prince haiti okay. so this is where i was born some years ago until i moved on to the state eons ago so i'm mm -hmm. not going to have to tell when so therefore i don't want anyone to guess my age but i can let them i can let them do the work they can google my name if they want to okay so and i was always interested when my parents uh, used uh, to buy me toys around Christmas and so on, my basic job and only job, I had to break my uh, toys apart. And I had my little brother say, hey, you are breaking your toys. I said, no, I'm not breaking my toys. I'm looking at to find out how my toys work. So, and little did I know, I was in the processes of uh, doing a reverse engineering. Yes. And I always uh, like science, especially uh, biological science, because uh, when I was growing up, uh, I grew up on a very, very, very large farm. So where we had all kinds of animals from goats, pigs, and chicken, horses, donkeys, mules, mm -hmm. uh, cattle, and you name it. So uh, we, had uh, a large, large farm. Still these days, uh, we have that large farm even more because uh, we keep on buying uh, all the people's properties who are passing away or who want to move on somewhere else that we are buying. So, and I always had uh, a love uh, for animals and uh, how they were interacting in the real world and things like that. So, and I had a passion uh, for biology. So then I decided uh, to study science and biological sciences and biomedical engineering. And over the years, I work at the university, at the patent office, mm -hmm. so and so on. So then I move on to California, not some distant years away, and I'm still involved in uh, STEM education. And also, I did some work on for a local college here, and so on. And uh, that has been my passion uh, science and technology engineering mathematics. So just because I am in science and technology engineering mathematics, that does not mean I know everything. Right. But my job is uh, to encourage uh, people uh, to help me in areas that I'm not good at. So collaboration. And uh, this is exactly where the Gizzo platform comes in. So if I'm not good at X, Y, and Z, I can go on the Gizzo platform and I can look up someone who is good at X, Y, and Z. And I say, hey, I'm doing this. I'm working on that. How can we work together? And as scientists or as STEMers, uh, we fail not to realize how to tap others. How can we use others' talent? And I always want to tell people that my talent is not for me to use it is at the service of others. Absolutely. And I think uh, this is uh, what we have to do. Uh, absolutely. So I'm not sure exactly if I have uh, answered your question. No, I mean, <laughs> you have, and you led me to other questions. Um, I'm going to go back before I, to I ask 
about the collaborations that we're witnessing now in COVID. But I want to go back to when uh, you were, as your brother said, your sibling said, you were breaking up your toys. Did your parents, um, well, not really so much your parents. Let's say many parents do feel that way about their children breaking their toys. And then also um, me as a female and the oldest child I remember growing up uh, where my brothers would be able to put together their bikes, right? But my father always put my bike together or even my dollhouse together. Mm -hmm. I never had those opportunities and I feel like, you know, you're, you're robbed. And, you know, so I definitely knew not to take, do what my brothers did, make a whole new bike, even with their brand new bikes, you know, I mean, so how could you encourage parents, you know, to um, some ways now while they're home to really think about, um, not even think about, but to, you know, safely allow some engineering, reverse engineering, and, and like, how would you go about that? Just using this time wisely, because, you know, people are looking for some different things to do. Children, they, you know, young people, not just children, they have energy, you know, and, and, and we want to, uh, you know, I want to help parents to think of ways to use, you know, what's around them and to encourage some different type of learning and some skills. What would you say to that? So um, basically, you are right. Um, there is uh, this video. Uh, which is a uh, very fascinating uh, by uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. So, so in the master class, uh, I don't remember the name of the video, okay. but if you were to, I have it on Gizo. I don't remember the title of okay. it, so oh. I have uh, I have it posted. Um, the video is perfect because remember, as a young boy, I was very curious. Mm -hmm. Okay, curiosity is not something that we have to punish. So parents do punish our curiosity for one specific reason. There is not this inner laziness in us. Yes. If you break this, I have to clean it. Okay? So uh, if a young child sees an egg, the idea is not to find out what that egg is. So the only way that young child is going to, have to know what that egg is, if it falls and that egg breaks, so therefore he, she knows not to let it go next time because it will break, it will make a mess. Curiosity. So what we need now to do as parents is not to be careful not to say stop. If that thing if your child is in the processes of um, looking at certain things and that thing is not going to cause any harm or kill that child, just let the child play. It's very important. And uh, we have uh, to come out to learn uh, uh, this paradigm that is important. Curiosity is how we come to do, to do things. So now you are an adult, I'm an adult. We are stemmers. Right. So what happens it is a child in us that never grows up. Right. So we as scientists, we never grow up. We're always curious. So if you look around you, if you go to a park and you see a small child playing in, on the playground, that child is looking everywhere, looking, trying not to engage with its, its environment, his environment. Right. So, but uh, we as parents, don't get into the mud, you are going to get dirty. Don't get into the water because you are going to, have to get your clothes wet. So we have uh, to um, be less uh, on search and let them be curious. And uh, this is how they will learn. And uh, this is how they will be curious because why do we scientists tinker with plants and herbs? Because now we are looking for cure for diseases, discoveries, right. and things like that. So right. now with the COVID-19, what are we trying to do? We are trying to find new ways to have a vaccine. But to have a vaccine, we have to tinker with new ideas. We have to look for plants. We have to look for this, and we have to look for that. 
Yeah, and also uh, what I like what's happening from this collaboration, there's less, um, there's less of, you know, uh, turfing, well, not turfing, but um, holding on to ideas. There's more open source open sourcing of sharing ideas, you know, um, because when, you know, someone has an idea and then someone else may have had a different idea, but now they hear your idea and it sparks another idea. Believe it or not, it's called, um, there's a TED talk that is called When Ideas Have Sex. It's mm -hmm. actually one of my favorite TED talks. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm starting to see that now uh, that, you know, countries, you know, a setting aside qualms and, you know, working together, sharing their scientists, their technologists mm -hmm. and uh, engineers and stuff. And they're all, you know, working together and uh, trying to solve problems. And, and so in terms of post, um, post quarantine, like, what do you see um, happening in terms of uh, collaboration? Because even though I see the states with the uh, federal government going back and forth on when quarantine is supposed to be over. However, um, everyone there, I shouldn't say everyone, there seem to be some kind of, you know, consensus that um, the a vaccine probably won't be available until, you know, for 18 months. So next year around summertime, right? Mm -hmm. But what do you see happening? Um, you know, I guess to protect the, you know, or, or just not just to protect us, not to lead you, but what do you see happening in terms of this collaboration post quarantine in terms of, um, you know, the, the STEM fields, the STEM industries? So uh, basically, I believe uh, the biggest problem there is um, with collaboration is money. So money is the problem. This guy says, as discovered X, Y, Z, if I go ahead and share it that this guy is going to steal my idea mm -hmm. and he's uh, going to, to build his company, he's going to, to make a profit when I come to discover it and I make nothing about it. So I think uh, what needs to happen, we need them to collaborate, but collaboration in terms of uh, humanitarian work. Right. So you are doing it for humanity. Right. So that was the calling to be stemmers. The right. calling out to be stemmers uh, were not to be for my own interest, but uh, for the interest of humanity. So we learn how to build bridges that are strong, steady, so that when someone crosses over, that bridge is not collapsed. That is basically humanitarian work. So. Right. As a scientist, when we come out to discover new drugs, that is supposed to be for humanity. So not for how deep my pocket will be. And that has not changed over the last 10 years, 15 years. So in terms of our patents, so we protect our ideas. We don't share it so that others do not steal it. So we have uh, these uh, big uh, pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. So they have uh, these proprietary stuff so they have it in lock on the lock and keys in such a way, even the other company next door could be working on it. They say, okay, we're not going to share it until we finish this. We don't know exactly if this is going to work for us. If it doesn't work for us, and we go to the next one. So therefore we are sitting on intellectual properties mm -hmm. that will benefit humanity. So, and again, if you were by accident fighting at the same thing, and they'll come back and try to sue you to find out if you didn't steal the ideas or if someone else that used to work on for the company didn't move over and give on that thing away and things like that. So I believe we have to remove money away from the system and think more on humanitarian work. So Milton, what do you think, and because I don't get to ask um, too many other people this, it's mm -hmm. always, you know, I, I would call it my coveted community, my STEM community. I can okay. ask certain questions to. Um, so what, what are some of the positive impacts you're witnessing um, through as a result of uh, what's happening now across the world with uh, COVID-19? 
Well, let's look at the question. What, 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 some of the, what are some of the positives? For example, I'm seeing, uh, we're, you know, I saw that um, was in New Delhi or Delhi, uh, India. Oh, yeah. You know? So the positive, yes. Yeah, the uh, positive. I, 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 because so people I, don't want to talk about that, you know? People don't want to talk about that, but I, I, I exactly get you. Yeah, you see, you follow right? I hate to tell you, Mother Nature has a way to cleanse itself. Absolutely. So, and, 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 and you know, we don't mess with Mother Nature. No. So I always, no. I believe, I always believe that COVID-19 COVID mm -hmm. happens for a specific reason. So Mother Nature comes to a point, I can't breathe anymore. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this anymore. So now I have to put a halt to certain things. So yeah. when it comes out to air pollution, just like you were about not to mention yes. in New Delhi. So yeah. uh, mountain Himalaya, so which yeah. is basically 100 miles away. So for the last 30 years, they could not see the ice cap on top of this mountain. So right. due to less traffic, less air pollution, so now they were able to see it. So here where I am in California, so the air quality is not always the best. So now, yeah, it there, by the way. one week after, there was, uh, I know. The LA, 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 I'm sorry. Just really downtown LA. I can't stand so, 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 it. So LA, LA, is, LA is not the best place uh, to oh. actually be. So it is a parking lot. So yeah. since I live in Northern California, so I live in a very small town, yeah. um, traffic is not that bad. And the air quality in the valley is very nice. Mm -hmm. So unless I go on the highway at high time, high traffic, and things like that. But now the air, the air quality, okay, is so nice. But one thing that I hope that many people come to realize, come to have is humility. Yes. We have to humble ourselves. So we are looking out for these big houses and uh, these are fancy cars and these big offices but in reality these things are not important they're, the they're primary, not essential exactly <laughs> they are not essential the, the 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 most essential thing is your health yes. not your wealth like they say your wealth is your health if you're not healthy you cannot have wealth so you have to think about in terms of your health, then wealth. So I hope humility is something that we all learn from this. So the virus does not know border, right. uh, does not know color, mm -hmm. your ethnicity, your political affiliation, and so on. So I hope we become better people so more humble, saying hi to your neighbors and things like that. And also stop trashing the environment because okay. if we keep on trashing the environment, Mother Nature is going to get mad and he's she's coming back. Save herself. Yeah, she's going to save herself. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, and, and rightfully so. And it's, um, you know, like I said, I don't get to ask many people of uh, the positives and you know even my um own mom i had to tell her uh, please stop with all these negatives there are some positives out there that are be you know and just and i now i'm starting to see that you know she might post uh let's say i'm gonna be generous mm -hmm. let's say she posts four negative things mm -hmm. Uh, she may find one thing <laughs> to share. But so I, the way I look at it, I see so many positive things that are happening, but I know it's too sensitive to speak to, say, the general public uh, about it because we're deep into it. And I know that there are a lot of laws and I'm not just, I'm not even talking about life yet. I'm talking about living a lifestyle, you mm -hmm. know, what people are, you know, are feeling like they're going through and so many people I feel like they're still not getting it like when I hear people talk about oh when this is over oh, I'm gonna get my nails done or I can get a haircut I was like oh god they're still not getting it they're still you know? not getting it so I must say getting it so the interesting thing is we have to find humility in this 
And I always say the world is binary. Yes. Just like on the computer is a binary zero and ones. So the world is the same. You have above and below. Mm -hmm. So if there is above, there is below. So, and we have to see the positive that is coming out of this. Mm -hmm. And now you go on the highway, traffic is easy. Okay. Yeah. So that is a positive. Okay. Yeah. So mother nature is not going to throw certain things at us. So even as a scientist, stemmers, we have uh, to realize that certain things happen. So of course, uh, there will be some companies that will come out much more profitable than they were before the virus. Absolutely. Absolutely. But at the same time, we as people, we have uh, to realize, why are we doing all this? I'm driving on the highway, I'm cutting off my neighbors uh, because I want them to be to work. So now look at me, I'm stuck for the last uh, three, four weeks at home because I cannot go. So are these are things more important. Right. So they're not trying to get out to know your neighbors. So do I know the guy next door? Does the guy next door knows me? And things right. like that. So it is important to see uh, the positive uh, than the negative. So, and I truly believe that the positive outweighs the negative. And uh, this is exactly, instead of being negative, let's be more optimistic and be positive. In the sense of being positive, that does not mean things that will be okay. But right. at the end of the day, you will be okay as a person. As, as oh gosh, for sure. The uh, one thing I do want to end with is um, one of the, the biggest positives that I'm appreciating, even though it still has a lot of work uh, ahead, mm -hmm. but uh, the transformations that schools have to understand they're in this new space now there is no going back doing it the way that we've been doing it and also working in the ways that we had to work you know um we were stuck just speaking of schools now not businesses but just speaking about schools how we were stuck you know uh, society has left the schools uh, uh, way behind. Schools are still the way that they're rolled out. Traditionally, public schools I'm talking about, uh, you know, from industrial times, you know, this is a new time. And I still see the struggle. I still see the fight. And what's crazy to me, and I'm sure, you know, you two think uh, like this when people are talking about the 21st century and the new millennium, you know, new millennium, then we're in the 20th year. We're in the 20th year of the new millennium. People are still acting like, the millennium is coming. You know, we got to do something for this new millennium. And, 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 and those who are most thinking about is, are these academic institutions that are teaching like we're still, an op, not, just, not just teaching, I'm not just talking about in the classroom, but I'm talking about the whole idea of schools, you know, the way that they are, the public schools. I, so I'm excited uh, about that positive, even though I know they're not there. It's, to me, it's like, a baby learning to walk, you know? Yeah, so, so this is one thing uh, that I tried uh, to talk about is uh, we have uh, to reach on uh, that change, the paradigm. And uh, right. we cannot keep on doing things the way we did things 100 years ago. So right. uh, to survive is uh, to learn how to adapt to new changes. Right. And uh, this is how we are going uh, to make it the next day and the next day. So, and... Uh, I have been in the academic bubble. So these guys had dinosaurs. So they don't want to change. They don't want to adapt onto new things, onto new ideas and things like that. So when you try to tell them certain things, they try to shoot it down. And not because they want to shoot it down. I think that there is a sense of jealousy. If I let you go, you will be successful. Your name is going to be in the media you will be uh, the next guy and I'll let you go. Um, no, I think there is uh, this uh, ego centrism. Yes, yes. That is basically, if I help you, you will be successful. And as I'm still going to be here, I think we have uh, to let go of our ego. Yes. Once we do that, uh, humanity is going to, have to be so much better. So I do things not because for me, just because I believe that my talents 
are basically there to serve others. And I don't, if my talents were to serve me, what could be the purpose? Right. Okay. Right. So now you have uh, the nurses, uh, the medical professionals okay. who are now in the front line of uh, trying uh, to uh, battle uh, this virus. They are not doing it for themselves. They are yeah. doing it uh, to save lives. Okay. The nurses, the gross, the, the grocers, exactly. you know, it's just so many people who exactly. were considered, you no, know, except for the, you know, nurses, but so many of these, we're, we're starting to see who's essential. Exactly. You know, and uh, there are the a lot of people back home. <laughs> right. The truck the truck driver. Drivers, you know, uh, you know, just beaten down, you mm -hmm. know, before COVID. I, to me, I'm, you know, I'm not excited about how it's happening, mm -hmm. but I'm excited about the opportunities I see for us to take advantage of. But the truth of the matter is, I know that we're not there. I, today, I just, um, before talking to you, I just came back because I was looking at a space for my center, mm -hmm. finally opening it uh, okay. this fall. Congratulations. Yeah, it's not everything not signed yet, but I'm gonna keep talking into existence, you know. Um, you know, and I was so surprised how many people were out walking without masks or anything and interacting and trying to interact as if, you know, I was like, wow, these people just, uh, so, you know. And, and also there's a, this a stigma associated with the mask. So if you have a mask, you must be diseased. In reality, having right. a mask is not disease. Having a right. mask is uh, to protect you from being diseased. Right. Okay? So right. if you are out about, you do not know exactly where that other person has been. Right. So you know exactly. This is one of the many reasons I try to tell people, just be careful. So I'm going to see my friend. Okay. Yes, you are going to see your friend. But do you know who your friend has been interacting with? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now, you know your friend is interacting with Jeannie or Paul. So now, do you know who Paul has been interacting with? Or Jeannie. So, right? Or Jeannie. <laughs> so, you know you are going to interact with Susan or Sean, but you have to understand, you are now in the processes of yeah. expanding your network. by Exponentially. <laughs> yeah, so this is one of the main reasons people should not have a stigma using a mask. Yes. So I even uh, posted uh, a video how to make a simple mask at home, so yeah. which is uh, very nice, uh, not complicated. Um, I don't know, it is kind of challenging at this point uh, to find um, some surgical mask or N95. Yeah. Yes. So since I live in a region where Earthquake is a problem. So fires are often rampant. So I always have uh, an emergency bag. So yeah. I have uh, those things ready to go. So when COVID-19 came, I already had all these things in my emergency bag, I simply had to pull them. So, and I always try to tell people, try to have an emergency bag, regardless mm -hmm. where you are, what the situation, because you never know. So have the necessary things that you know you will need to survive. Food for three days or something like that. Well, I told my family, my, um, my children, uh, although they're 25 and 23, I said, mm -hmm. listen, moving forward, um, you know, the goal uh, for this family, the objective for this family mm -hmm. is to stay ready so we don't have to get ready. Mm -hmm. And staying ready means you know, in many different areas of, just as you said, in terms of what we need around the house, because you never know what may happen, mm -hmm. you know, not having, uh, you know, your gas darn near on empty, mm -hmm. you know, my son's 25, you know, they want to mm -hmm. put in just a little bit of gas mm -hmm. and whatnot, but, you know, keep your car filled and, you know, even with financial and then, and, and I even, I told them that even I am finding that um, I need to even be more serious about my, my health in terms of my, my weight, because I'm seeing mm -hmm. that, um, you know, I've put my own self, you know, because of my habits or poor habits, should I say, you know, uh, put, not put myself first, but I put my own self mm -hmm. in jeopardy 
by having high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. That's only related to the weight, right? That's mm -hmm. unacceptable, you know, because what that means is that I can be much more susceptible in terms of, you know, um, if I were infected in terms of recovery and things of that nature. So that's how we're moving in terms of, um, you know, now in response to uh, COVID and also, you know, um, post quarantine, mm -hmm. because I don't feel that there's going to be this, you know, uh, once COVID is over, what I keep hearing, there's post quarantine. And then, and then the other thing that I've learned through this experience is the math for so many people. So, I mean, young adults, not knowing the difference between inches and feet, you know, and I, and it's not like I'm, I, I'm just noticing it like on uh, Instagram or some, some of the stuff that they're saying, or mm -hmm. I'm like, you might want to know this simple, this math <laughs> is a big difference, Yep. you know? And so, no, I just, I, I, I thank you because I, again, Milton, certain conversations, you know, I just can't have because uh, it, it makes people uncomfortable. And yeah, so this, this is what happened. People have, um, to be uncomfortable to be comfortable yeah so we have an obligation to tell them the truth not to sugarcoat yeah. things because uh, the truth has a tendency to hurt but this is what it is we cannot move on to alternative facts we have uh, to tell the facts so we have uh, to fake news. no fake news no no fake news we have uh, to decipher mm -hmm. we have to decipher uh this is what it is and it is that so uh we can try to change the notion of our certain things we can try to tell things that this is not the way it is but at the end of the day we have to be honest yes and i think that is uh what we call it the intellectual dishonesty in our society today yes so and so many things and whenever i'm watching the news or i'm watching uh certain things i'm listening to people i said if you were in my classroom and uh, you were giving me this thing, you will fail the class because yes. this is not the question that is asked. You are right. answering a different question. Could right. you do this in the classroom? Right. If you cannot do it in the classroom, the real world, which is at the largest classroom, you cannot do it there either. You have to tell the truth. The truth matters. Okay. There's another connection that is not being applied consistently you know yes you identify yeah so that is a uh, very very important uh to uh tell the truth uh discern the facts tell the truth mm -hmm. and form educate the population and the biggest problem there is is a lack of education mm -hmm. so where the population is not informed so education is not in terms of the academic years right um, Telling you education in terms of what we need to know to survive uh, and form uh, the society. So especially right now, you know, in the black uh, community as minority people. So there were misinformation back in yes. the days about HIV. Uh, yeah. HIV was uh, supposed to be a homosexual elite uh, white people. Right. And right. now there was uh, this about uh, this virus. Black people are immune to this COVID-19. So yeah. misinformation, and guess what? Now, if you are watching in the city of Chicago, more than 50% of the black population, 50% mm -hmm. of the people who are dying okay. with this COVID-19 right. are basically in the minority group, uh, black right. people. So the Same thing here in New York City, and um, I'm also in Long Island, and we're hit hardest. But, you know, that... You know, that's because of other issues, you mm -hmm. know, health issues, the, you know, intellectual conversations that mm -hmm. are just missing, the misinformed mm -hmm. uh, conversations that are rampant, uh, you know, online. And then, I mean, just as you stated, when we were talking about uh, when you meet someone, when you said like Jenny or Paul or, you know, and you, well, who else were they with? Mm -hmm. There are certain conversations that we always needed to have in other instances in our lives, need to mm -hmm. know 
who you're interacting with and who have they interacted with that exactly. we're just, we don't want to have those conversations. And mm -hmm. just as I indicated that, you know, I've learned, um, you know, I've isolated, you know, just uh, many people in my life in terms of uh, childhood friends and uh, family, you know, not necessarily my adult friends, but they don't want the truth, you know, or, you know, and even though I've learned to, practice compassionate truth, mm -hmm. you know, um, but they still, they just want something else. And yeah, because you know, often time I'm when you try to tell the truth, I say, why you are so blunt or so rude? Yeah. I don't know exactly what is blunt or rude about <laughs> telling the truth, you know? Yeah. That is very important. Um, mm -hmm. Knowing the facts. Yes. So some people want to hear, but not exactly what they need to hear. No. And that has not been uh, the problem. And yeah. uh, our job is to inform. Yes. Our job is to educate. Because uh, as scientists, uh, we seek the truth. Absolutely. And uh, this is uh, one of the main reasons as a scientist, when uh, we conduct experiment, we don't only conduct one to say it is valid. Mm -hmm. We do it often and multiple times mm -hmm. until we have uh, this empirical evidence yes. that yes. it is this we can talk about it. Right. So if it cannot be repeated done by some other person based on our findings, it is not happening, okay? Stand up. So, we, we, so we have this obligation right. to educate, to talk All right. about things that are important. So, and I hope uh, the government, those in higher uh, places that you and I are not uh, yes. can learn and uh, can educate themselves about the truth and what's what's matter. So what's are important? Words, so, words matter and modeling mm -hmm. matter also. Exactly. You asking others to wear a mask. You asking others to social distance. You might want to model that. But um, Milton, thank you so much. You know, tell us, tell everyone how they can follow you and follow Diesel and anything else that you're doing, they can follow and connect with you. Thank you so much, uh, Sabrina, for having me on uh, this wonderful uh, talk. <laughs> so, which I really, really appreciate. So we could talk about these things all day, all night. So <laughs> I know. I do know it has been a little while now since you and I uh, were in touch, but I thank you for the invite. No, but this year, we talked this, I mean, we talked this year a couple of times, right? Yes, we yeah. did, yeah. So It's and, only April. It's only April. <laughs> it's only April, yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, thank you so much. So, uh, anyone who is interested about uh, science, uh, technology, engineering, mathematics, so you can always... Uh, follow me on gizo.com, G-E-A-Z-L-E.com. So that is a platform that is there to uh, collaborate, inform, educate on many issues. So we talk about facts, science, and things like that. So uh, please join me on gizo, G-E-A-Z-L-E.com. So I thank you so much uh, Sabrina, for giving me the opportunity to speak with you today, uh, to talk oh, about uh, so many things, and all is greatly appreciated. So I <laughs> hope we can do it soon. Again. Yes, we'll we'll make a point of that, and um, you know, all of us, um, the other gentlemen, Steve mm -hmm. and Paul, um, and Gerald, um, some opportunities. I'm always interested in collaborating. Mm -hmm. I know I can't do it alone. Um, uh, I can, you know, certain things, but it doesn't make sense to. There's a greater reach and more capacity, a better capacity, you know, when you're doing it with uh, like-minded um, persons. And uh, that's who you are. I appreciate you, Milton. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I have uh, a wonderful afternoon where you are. Okay. And uh, early evening for you, so early afternoon for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Again, this is Dr. Sabrina Oliver, Ojai Technologies, www.ohitech.com. Thank you. Bye-bye, y'all. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, bye.